Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you all the books that I plan to read in February. Now, I do have quite a bit of books to talk about. I have 10 in total. This is definitely more than I usually read in any given month, but January was a great reading month and you will see that in a couple of days when I talk about all the books that I've read in my wrap up. And I definitely hope that we have the same tendency that shooshes over a little bit in February so that at the very least I can get to all my buddy reads and read along books. And then I have some books lower on the priority list that if I have time, great. If I don't have time, it's not the end of the world. The first book that I'm going to talk about is very high on the priority list and that is Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. It's happening. I'm starting my lesson. I want to finish this by the 19th of February because then we have a spoiler filled discussion about this book over on Steve's channel. I will link his channel in the description box down below. And I think that we are going to be joined by a couple of OG Malazan fans. So that's definitely going to be very interesting. I don't really know what to think about this book. I've heard so many rumors about Malazan and some of them are quite positive. Others are not to say the least. So I'm just going to go in blind and see where it takes me. I am going to start this one at the 1st of February because even though it's only 500 pages I know that that can be deceiving and I've heard a lot about Malazan's difficulty level so I want to be finished by the 19th so this is definitely happening. Next I have another buddy read and that is for Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. I'm going to read this together with Amy over at my discord and if anybody else wants to join you're more than welcome. I know that Chris over at Chris Bookish Cauldron as well as Jashana absolutely loves this series because this is the start of a trilogy. I think that then we have a sequel trilogy in the same role so definitely a lot of books if I like this first one. And I also know that Huck over at Badger reads DNF the series. So we'll see what I think. I do feel like I'm going to love it based on some of the things that I know are in this book and in this world. If I'm not mistaken, we have a religion with a messiah type character like hundreds of years ago. And this messiah type character also had apostles. And one of them was a prostitute and she sold her body in order to keep everybody in this group alive. And because of this, being a prostitute is almost a religious act. And we follow our main character who is a prostitute. Now I have heard that there are some BDSM scenes in this book and some people say that it's very prevalent, others say that it's maybe one or two scenes and that's it. And that most of it is political intrigue. I love political intrigue, I don't mind BDSM, I, I don't really have problem with those scenes in a book. So I think that I will like it and I especially like that religious aspect here which is super cool. So this is 900 pages, by the way. I didn't, tiny book, tiny book. I thought that I was going to read this quite quickly. 900 pages. So I do have some big ones on the list and yeah, we will see how far I get. Next up, I have another read along and that is The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. So if you're unaware, I am reading one standalone and then I am going to read the trilogy, the Age of Madness trilogy, I think. And I'm going to read one book per month. So. In January, I read Best Serves Cold. The 6th of February, we are going to have a spoiler-filled discussion over on my channel for Best Serves Cold. And then the beginning of March, we're going to have a spoiler-filled discussion for the heroes. This is a bigger book. Spoiler alert, I wasn't the biggest fan of Best Serves Cold. It was just middle of the road for me. This one, it says three men, one battle, one battle. No heroes. So the one battle aspect, I don't really think that I'm absolutely going to love this book, but we will see. It's also a pretty big one. It's 600, a little bit over 600 pages. So I'm starting to think that the formula that Joe Abercrombie uses again and again, and he used it in his original trilogy and he used it in his last standalone, Best Served Cold. If he uses it in this one as well, I must say that I'm a little bit over it at this point. The books are still good, but I can't say that I'm really enjoying them like oh, all time favorites or anything like that. But also, I just read that one standalone. Who knows? Maybe I'll absolutely love the heroes. I am more than anything just excited to get to the new trilogy because I did enjoy the original First Law trilogy and I do want to see what he does with this next trilogy. But based on that first standalone, I don't know if I'm going to be the biggest fan of the heroes and then the last one, which is... Forgot the name, but that last one. I don't know. We will see. Next, another buddy read that I have with Chris over at Chris Bookish Cauldron, and this is also a very big one, The Wall of Storms by Ken Lu. So this is the second book in the Dandelion Dynasty. The first one, The Grace of Kings, made it to my top 10 of 2021. I do think that I liked the first half of that book more than the second half, but I still liked it overall enough that it was on my list. This is, based on the first book, the series that comes closest to the feeling that I had with or while reading A Song of Ice and Fire. 
So that's pretty high praise for me. So I'm very excited to pick up the second book. I have heard that the second and the third book are even better. And the fourth one is coming out this year and that is the conclusion of the entire series. So it would be nice if we can read one book per month and then be ready for when that fourth book comes out. I think that comes out in April already. Something like that. So that's why we have to read this one in February and then the third one in March and then the fourth one in April. This is, like I said, a big one. It's more than 800 pages. We'll see how far we can get through this. I think that I will pick this one up on audiobook. I picked up the first one on audiobook and that wasn't the best decision because a lot of POVs, a lot is happening, not that easy to follow on audiobook. But now that I have a sense of the world, a sense of our main characters, I think that I might be able to follow on audiobook and otherwise I have to switch to the physical copy that I have. Although this brick of a hardcover, I don't really know how easy it will be to read in that one, but we will see. I am quite excited for it because like I said, that first one loved it and I know that a lot of people like the second one even more, so that's high praise. Now, those are all of the books that I am reading as part of a body read or read along. And now everything else, which is still quite a lot, I just wanna get through for me because I'm excited for them. The first one is a Juliette Merlier book, Wildwood Dancing. This is the first in the Wildwood Dancing duology. I actually don't know how this duology is called, but this is a YA duology and it's the first YA that I'm going to read by Juliette Merlier. I'm kind of curious to see how it then differs from her adult works because I have never really thought that her adult works were specifically riddled with topics that make it adult. I can see that especially Daughter of the Forest has a pretty whimsical and sometimes dense writing style and of course you have that one very gruesome act there that immediately makes it adult but all of her other works I didn't really think that they were adult per se so I am interested to see the difference. If I'm not mistaken this is another fairy tale retelling I think of the 12 dancing princesses. I have never heard of that fairy tale so I'm quite excited to see what happens here and that's all I know. I know it's Juliette Merlier, it's a fairy tale retelling, it's a duology. If I am able but I'm probably not going to be able. But if I'm able, I would like to finish the entire duology in February, or at the very least then read the second book in March, because these are quite short. I think they're around 300 pages. It's YA, so I do expect to get through it quite quickly. So, you know, we will see. I am going to read these physically because I don't have them on audiobook. And then next up, finally, back into the world of Robin Hobb. So I actually don't know what the first and what the second one is, but I am going to start reading The Rainwild Chronicles. This is a quartet, but I have heard from Huck over at Badger Reads that these first two books were actually written as a standalone, as one book, not as a standalone, as one book. I'm, yeah. These are written as one book and this was originally a trilogy. But this one book was so big that they have divided it into two books. So now both of them don't really have a very clear arc, a very clear plot. And Huck said that it's best to read these back to back and read them as one book. So I'm going to try to do that. I have both of them on audiobook. We will see if I can pick up both in February. It could be that I'm reading one at the end of February and then the other one at the beginning of March, which is fine as well. But at the very least, I want to read them very close together and treat them as one book. Next up, I have another Juliette Merlier book. Um, I have this on audiobook, so it will probably depend on if I have an audiobook to fit in or if I have a physical book to fit in, whether or not I can read the entire Wildwood Dancing duology or just the first one, and then also read Heart's Blood by Juliette Merlier. This is a Beauty and a Beast retelling. Like I said, it's an adult standalone, and it's Juliette Merlier. It probably takes place in medieval Ireland somewhere, and it's probably going to have an amazing romance, so I cannot wait. It's also a shorter-ish book. It's almost 400 pages, so I know that I'm going to love it, so I'm quite excited to pick it up. And I also think that I need more whimsical read because Malazan is a little bit on the darker side. I think that especially the second book in the Dandelion Dynasty will be pretty dark and dense as well. And then I also have like The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie, which is also grimdark. So I need to have this fairy tale-esque books to kind of counterbalance that. And then I have two more books. Yes, two more and then we're done. And these are two new releases for January. So I just got them in the mail. If I have time, I will probably try to read them in February. Both of these are pretty short, so it should be possible. The first one is Temple of No God by H.M. Long. This is the sequel to Hall of Smoke. It has been said that both of these are standalones and that you can read them completely separate from one another. I do not agree. 
before even reading this, I do not agree. In the first one, we follow Hessa, who is a warrior priestess. She had a whole, you know, goal in that first one. She had an entire journey. And then this one takes place after that journey. We still follow Hessa. It's a series, in my opinion. It's a series of standalones, but it's still a series. If you follow the same main character and if it's chronological in nature, you should definitely read first the first one, Hollow Smoke, and then the second one, Temple of No God, in my opinion. I kind of compare it maybe a little bit to the first Lost standalones, where yes, they are standalones, but there is a very clear order to read them. I would say that this is probably going to be the same thing. I really liked Hall of Smoke. It was a debut novel, you could see it. The ending was a little bit convoluted, but the world that the author created, this main character, and just the magic system in general as well, which very tightly connected to the gods, I like that. So I definitely want to see what she does now after having more experience and probably some feedback on that first book. Next up, I have The Amber Crown by J.C. Bedford. This is also a standalone, I think, because I couldn't find anything about the sequel. And that actually made me more excited because I first thought that this was the first in the series. Now I think that it's a standalone. It makes me more excited. It's also a pretty short one. It's, well, it's under 500 pages with a pretty big font. This sounds like very traditional fantasy, but I have seen on the back that a lot of people say like it's with a twist, it has complex characters. So it gives me the feeling that this could be a hit for me if the author goes about it in the way that I like. In this book, we have a kingdom where the king has died, he was murdered, and the queen is now missing. And then we have a neighboring kingdom that is now preparing for war. I think that they want to take over that other kingdom where the king is dead. And it also says that there's long forgotten magic that is now stirring. And we follow three POVs. We follow, the first POV is of the bodyguard who failed to protect his king. The second POV is of a witch. And the third POV is of the assassin who assassinated the king. And if I'm not mistaken, it says something that all three of these need to listen to the dead king's spirit. So I actually forgot about that detail until I was reading the back again. And now I remember why it was different enough for me to actually pre-order. So I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about this. I have seen one bad review on Goodreads that said that I'm 60% in, nothing happened, what is this? And I thought, oh, a slow book, that's something that I usually like. So we will see. It, it can be very good, it can be very bad. That's always the thing, I suppose, with debut authors. It can go either way. At the very least, the premise sounded interesting, so I'm intrigued. So those are all of the books that I plan to pick up in February. We'll see how far I get 10 books and some of these are definitely chunkers. So I don't think that I will get to all of them, but at the very least you can say that I have options. Please let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were, as well as which books you have on your February TBR or if you don't have a TBR, what your next read is going to be. As always, I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye!